Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Hunter Tuned. Uh, today I'm going to chip a Honda ECU for you guys and uh, hopefully kind of show you guys how to do it and the parts necessary and the tools necessary to do it as well. Um, remember, if you guys are new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. I'm posting all the time and uh, trying to keep the channel interesting. But uh, let me know if you guys like this video and if you want to see more stuff like this. I plan on doing two videos per day. One tutorial style video like this one or a review of a part or something and then my daily vlog so yeah stay tuned here we go now this is a p28 obd1 ecu this is a p28 a52 which means that it is an automatic ecu now we will be chipping this computer and converting it to a manual now to do this you pretty much need to take out all the solder joints at these 28 pin uh, at the 27256, there's 28 spots, uh, top and bottom here, that you need to desolder. And then you also need to desolder this 373 chip area. You take out the ones on the top there and then the ones on the bottom. And then a chip just like the one where my finger's on right now goes in this spot. And then a socket goes in this spot where you can put a chip in and out of or a Honda or anything like that. Now you also need to put a resistor here where R54 is. Hopefully you guys can see this. And then you also need to put a piece of jumper wire across J1. So the two spots here at R54 and then the two spots at J1. <clears throat> and then the CN2 port, which is on the bottom, there's five slots right there, five solder joints that you can take out. And the first four you utilize, one, two, three, four, you don't desolder five. And then you just put your data logging header in at through one through four. Now a P28 already has VTEC. So it already has the VTEC switch, which is this one right here at IC14. And it already has like a C60 capacitor and a couple of the resistors you need over here to make VTEC actually work. I will be doing another chipping video like this in a future video that we will do a VTEC conversion on an OBD1 Honda ECU. But I just figured I would kind of show you basic chipping for now and show you kind of my methods and how to desolder the uh, ECU. Now what I like to do when I do uh, ECUs for Hondas is I actually like to take the board right out of the case. And uh, to do that you need to take off the front cover which is just held on by five screws on the top. And then the front cover will come off. It just looks like this. And then you can take out this screw on the side by the ECU plugs and this screw comes right out. It's a Phillips head and then I drop it. So you take that out and then it comes with this little uh, bracket here that holds part of the board in into the uh, case there. So you take that one out and then you do the same thing on the bottom. Take off the back cover. And then once the back cover is removed, uh, it's going to look like this. And then you have another, uh, I believe, seven screws that hold the board into the case. So you just got to pop all these guys out. All right, and now that the board is completely unbolted, all the screws are taken out of the perimeter there, we can just literally push on the board, like so. And it comes right out of the case. So now it is easier for us to work with the board. Um, I like doing it this way because it seems to always give you a little bit more room to be able to desolder and solder your new components into the computer. So now I have the computer or the ECU board into my bench vise. Uh, you don't want to crank, cr uh, crank down on this too hard. Just get it barely snug so it doesn't move around and you can get at the board a little bit easier. And uh, what I use is I just use a regular, this like a Weller, you know, soldering iron here. I also use one of these uh, desoldering suckers. Uh, you could get these on eBay for like five bucks. Um, I bought this one a long time ago. It seems to work really well and it's just a plunger with a spring and then you put this over the solder joint you're trying to desolder and you just hit the button and it sucks the solder right out. I take the soldering iron and I poke one side of the board with the soldering iron to heat the solder joint up and then I take the sucker on the other side and I suck it right out. So now we have one of the spots cleared and we do that you know over this whole process until all of the joints are um, cleared. All right, guys, so I got all the spots I needed to desolder. I got all of them desoldered. 
So you can see the 27256 28 pin slot and then this 74HC373 spot I got desoldered. J1 and R54 desoldered. And now you can kind of see that there's a bunch of crap laying around by the uh, solder joints. You do not want to assemble it like that. So what I always do is I actually just take some brake cleaner and I clean it off with like an old toothbrush. So you just spray a little brake cleaner on it and hit it with a toothbrush and uh, all of that will clean right up. So I'm going to clean this thing up quick and uh, we can get to assembling the new parts. All right, guys, hopefully you can see a little bit better now of uh, the spots that are desoldered. I got all of them cleaned up pretty good. Uh, like I said, I just take like a non-abrasive toothbrush or something with, you know, that's something that's not super abrasive and just spray it down with carb cleaner or brake cleaner and uh, kind of clean up any of the uh, residual solder that might be on the board. Because if you get any residual solder on the board here, uh, you could have a cross joint, which could make the ECU not operate uh, correctly or not work at all. But yeah, this is what we're looking like so far. And uh, we will get to installing the kits and deleting uh, the automatic transmission and switching it over to a manual. Next, I'm going to be converting this ECU from an auto to a manual. And this step is fairly straightforward. You have to remove the RP18 resistor, which is right where my fingernail is, RP18, and then RP17, which is the one directly to the right of it. And you need to cut those out and install a jumper wire where R18 was. So I'm just going to cut these out with a side cutter quick. There we go, now the resistors are removed and we can desolder RP18 and install a jumper wire where that one is. All right, so I just got the jumper wire installed into RP18. So now that is finished, soldered it through the bottom. I usually just use like a leg of a resistor or something like that to actually use as a jumper wire. You could use a paper clip as well, uh, same thing. Now to start the chipping process, I just had another jumper wire laying around, so I figured I'd do this right away. Uh, you need to install the jumper wire there at J1, and that pretty much activates the chip. So if you cut J1, it'll run like a stock computer. After you do this, uh, and then when J1 is hooked up, it'll actually run on the chip. So I got that installed. Now we can move on to R54, which is just a resistor that goes below J1. Alright, so hopefully you guys can see now that I have R54 installed, the resistor there, and I'm just going to solder it in. And then once it's soldered in, I just cut the legs off. And boom, that is done. Next, I'm putting the 373 chip in, which is this one right here in the center. And uh, to put this in, you kind of got to bend the legs until they fit into the slots that you desoldered. And once they're in, you know, they just poke out of the other side and you just solder it in. Guys, so the 373 chip is installed. Looking good, looking good. I got it soldered up pretty good. Looks nice. You don't want to go too hot on the solder, otherwise you burn the board. So you got to kind of be careful with this stuff and you got to know, you know, when to let off the iron and if the, you know, solder is getting too hot, etc. But, uh, I've been doing this for a little while now, so I kind of know, you know, how hot to keep the iron and all that kind of stuff. I've been doing this for like seven or eight years now. So, uh, yeah, it takes a couple fuck ups to learn, but once you got it, you should be good. So lastly is the, uh, chip, uh, the socket that goes at the 27256. This is where the chip is going to actually be inserted into the ECU. It is just a socket, like I said, and that just slides right into the spots you desoldered here. And then you just solder that guy right in.
All right, guys, got the 28-pin uh, socket installed and the data logging header. Now, the only other thing that is a good idea to replace is this C14 capacitor. This is the main capacitor for the ECU. So to remove this guy, it's kind of tricky sometimes. Um, what I usually do is I just heat the back side of the board until this guy gets loose like it is. Uh, so it's loose now and you could probably just bust the tabs off of it and then you can desolder the holes and install the new capacitor. Now to note on a lot of these capacitors and stuff like that, they have a negative side. So like the negative side always faces that side of the ECU. And when you install chips and stuff like that, so like all these little chips that are in the computer, they have a little half moon on them. So that half moon always faces the ECU plugs. So that side. So I'm just gonna get this busted out of here and then we can desolder the holes. Now we can desolder that spot and install the new capacitor at C14. All right guys, and that is pretty much how to chip a Honda ECU and the parts you need to install. Now to finish the job, I always spray some clear coat, just like clear coat for any spray can, whatever. And I spray it over the ECU to kind of get any of the coating back onto the solder joints because if you leave it bare, it is uh, successful, uh, susceptible to corrosion and can actually damage the solder joints. But uh, yeah, like I said, I just throw some clear coat on there and we are all good to go. Hopefully you guys can see that. This is what the finished product is looking like. It is looking very nice. So this thing should be all good to go. Now I do offer these ECUs and chipping services on my website. So if you guys wanna check it out, huntertuned.com. Um, you can send me your ECU and I can do it for you or you can buy an ECU from me already done. Unfortunately, I don't have any ECUs at the moment to sell. Um, they're getting harder and harder to find guys. Uh, so if anybody knows of any chipped ECUs or stock ECUs for that matter and they want to send them over to Hunter Tuned, let me know. Uh, you can always email me or comment below. But yeah, so that's how to chip the ECU. And now you would go ahead and install your uh, tuned chip or tune the computer and throw Honda in or whatever. So yeah, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little tutorial and uh, it was helpful for you. If it was, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. I've been posting every day for the most part and uh, trying to keep the channel interesting and uh, keep it growing. So uh, yeah, anyways, thanks for watching guys and uh, have a good day.